Hey, how's it going, Daniel Sulfurs? Today we're gonna to talk about what is engine knock and how you can easily fix it. Now, to be clear, this video is going to be on how you can diagnose and fix engine knock, also known as spark knock, caused by detonation, which is very different from a rod knock or a main bearing knock, which is caused by worn out or damaged bearings at your main or connecting rod journals on your crankshaft. However, both types of knocks make it very similar, knocking or clacking or tapping noise, so it's very important you know how to differentiate and properly diagnose your issue. And that's exactly what we're going to do today on this 2004 Ford Ranger, which we believe has a knocking noise due to detonation. Now this car has a 3.0 liter V6 engine, but you can use the diagnostic procedures in this video on any car you're making and model. All right, so first let's talk about what is detonation and how it causes that knocking sound you hear whenever it occurs. So here's our cylinder head. It obviously usually lays on top of our engine this way. And here's our valves, here's our spark plug. And detonation is basically whenever you have a second ignition of the air fuel mixture inside your combustion chamber after your computer has fired your spark plug. So we'll use this cylinder as an example and assume that this piston is coming up on its compression stroke. So a few degrees before it reaches top dead center, as it's normal, our computer commands the ignition coil to fire a spark at our spark plug. As that happens, we ignite the air fuel mixture that's in our combustion chamber. But as soon as we ignite the air fuel mixture with our spark plug, a second or maybe even a third combustion or ignition of the air fuel mixture inside our combustion chamber occurs, maybe due to excessive heat or extreme pressure inside our uh, combustion chamber. And as the ignition from the second or third uh, combustion reaches the ignition from our spark plug, and as they collide, that's what makes that uh, distinct knocking noise that comes from your engine. All right, so there's the explanation for what detonation is. And again, what usually causes detonation is either excessive heat and or pressure inside your combustion chamber. So now let's talk about what are the most common things that could cause one of these and cause detonation with your engine. All right, so in my opinion, the most common cause of detonation that people experience is putting the low octane fuel or basically the wrong fuel in their car. And this happens a lot with higher end vehicles, let's say like a Mercedes where that engine is rated for, let's say a 91 octane fuel. But people go to the gas station, the lower octane fuel is obviously cheaper. They put that in there thinking they can get away with it. And then what happens is after they start driving down the road, they start hearing that you know, knocking noise, which is uh, from the detonation that's happening inside their engine. See that octane rating at the gas pump? That octane rating is how much that fuel can resist detonation, or in other words, the extreme pressures inside your uh, combustion chamber. So if you put a lower octane fuel, it can resist it less. And if you have an engine that's rated for 91 octane fuel due to high compression ratios, let's say, then you're gonna have detonation and hear that knocking noise. All right, next, a lean air fuel mixture can also cause engine knock. And as you may know, a lean air fuel mixture is whenever you have too much unmetered air entering your engine, or you have too little fuel entering your combustion chamber. Now, there are many reasons why you could be running lean, but a couple of examples are, let's say you have a vacuum leak right here. Let's say this clamp is loose and you got air leaking into your engine. And since that's unmetered air, since it's after our MAF sensor, which is what measures the amount of air entering our engine, you have too much air to the fuel that's being pumped into your engine. Therefore, you have a lean air fuel mixture. And then on the fuel side, let's say you have a clogged fuel injector or maybe a weak fuel pump that's not pumping enough or allowing for enough fuel to get inside your engine. And therefore you have too little fuel to too much air, therefore a lean air fuel mixture again. And whenever you have a lean air fuel mixture, your combustion temperatures go up because fuel actually has a cooling effect on your combustion temperatures. And whenever there's not enough of that or too much air to too little fuel, your combustion temperatures go up, therefore, why you could have a detonation and have engine knock. Next, if you put wrong spark plugs in your engine, you could also experience engine knock. See, different spark plugs come with different heat ranges. Now, if you put a wrong spark plug or a spark plug that's not recommended for your engine inside your engine, uh, and it cannot withstand that heat, it's gonna stay too hot for that engine, therefore increase the temperatures inside the combustion chamber, and which could lead to detonation. Also, the same thing can occur with badly worn spark plugs as well. Next, over advanced ignition timing could also cause detonation. And we were talking about ignition timing, we we're talking about when your car's computer or ignition control module tells your ignition coil to fire a spark 
at your spark plug. And that usually happens depending on different variables about five to let's say 30 degrees before the piston reaches top dead center. Now let's say you're working on a car that you can actually uh, advance or retard the ignition timing maybe with a distributor and you accidentally over advance it and where it's supposed to happen let's say uh, 15 degrees before top dead center it happens five degrees before top dead center. And when that happens you end up having too much pressure inside your combustion chamber which could lead to detonation. Next up a bad knock sensor could also cause detonation. Alright so the job of your knock sensor as the name would suggest is to basically sense knock coming from your engine perhaps due to detonation. And your knock sensor is usually bolted to the side of your block as you can see here. And when your car's computer senses knocking coming from your engine through your knock sensor, what it does is it Donald Trump's the ignition timing, therefore reducing the pressure that's inside your combustion chambers, which help to get rid of engine knock. Now the problem is different engines under different loads experience minor or mild detonation or engine knock, and the knock sensor helps your car's computer to adjust for that. But, if when, but when you don't have a working knock sensor or a knock sensor that's transcending the wrong signals to your engine, it throws the whole timing off and therefore it could actually lead to uh, experiencing engine knock. Alright, next, the excessive carbon buildup could also lead to detonation. Alright, so as you can see in this combustion chamber, we have some carbon buildup, but it's not extreme or excessive. But let's say on an engine, we just have an extreme amount of carbon buildup, let's say on these valves all over the combustion chamber and that could lead to detonation because because it basically increases our compression ratio which basically means our air fuel mixture has to be squeezed into a small area at our combustion chamber and when that happens you build up a lot of pressure and heat and that could lead to detonation all right now this list is getting pretty long but there's one last thing you need to check and that's if you have a bad egr now some of you may know your EGR system is responsible for recirculating some of your exhaust gases through your exhaust manifold or your exhaust pipes back into your engine and into your combustion chambers in order to reduce the combustion temperatures there. So your exhaust gases have very little oxygen content because it has already been burned up inside your engine. So basically your EGR system reintroduces that inert gas back into your combustion chambers which takes up a little bit of space there but it helps to reduce the combustion temperatures there. And whenever your EGR system fails, maybe due to an EGR valve that's not opening or an EGR solenoid that's not working properly, uh, your combustion temperatures go up, therefore you're gonna have detonation. All right, enough of that. So now let's go on to diagnosing our detonation issue on this car. And I know it's an engine knock or a detonation issue because the owner tells me that uh, the engine knocks whenever he puts in regular gas, but as soon as he puts in a premium or higher octane, gas in it, the knock goes away. But the problem is that this engine is supposed to work properly just on regular gas and not need higher octane fuel in order for it to not have detonation. Unless there's something wrong. So that's what we're going to diagnose today. So first thing we're going to do is to grab our good old scanner and connect it to our car's computer and run a scan and see whether we have any fault codes. Especially any codes related to our EGR system, our knock sensor maybe, or anything related or that could affect our timing as well. Also, as always, if you're interested in this scanner or any other tools or products I might be using in my videos, I'll put links to where you can buy them for cheap online down below in the description box. So don't be afraid to click on them and check them out. All right, so with key on engine off, I'm just gonna do an auto scan. This way it scans all the control modules on this car. So that way we won't miss anything. So there it scanned five control modules. And the most important one for what we're doing is was our PCM or power control module. And as you can see, none of these modules have any fault codes. All right, so now we don't have any fault codes. What we're going to do next is start our engine and look at some live data. We're going to look at our uh, short and long-term fuel trims, see whether we're running lean or not. Also look at our O2 sensors, make sure they're working properly and go from there. All right, so we'll choose our power control module. We'll go to live data. All right, so we got a long list of data pits on this scanner, which is great. So now I'm just going to choose the ones that are related to what we're doing. So here's a list I got. We got our oxygen, our MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor at 1.1 volts at idle, which is uh, about normal. And then we got our uh, oxygen sensors. This is our bank one sensor one, bank two sensor one. These are our pre-cat oxygen sensors. These sense the oxygen that's coming out of our engine and they should be oscillating from 0.1 to about 0.9 volts. And as you can see, they both are. Here you can see it better on this graphing feature. As you can see, it's going from about 0.1 to about 0.7, 0.8. And that's the case for both of them. And that's what you want to see on your PCAT oxygen sensors. 
And then here we have our post cat oxygen sensors for bank two sensor two and bank one sensor two. These are there to mainly monitor the efficiency of your catalytic converters. Sometimes they're used for uh, adjusting your air fuel mixture. I don't think it's the case on for this car, but that's just something you want to keep in mind. Next up, we got our fuel system status, and you want to. These all don't mean anything unless this is in closed loop. So, and as you can see, we're in closed loop. And here on the bottom, we got our short-term and long-term fuel trims for both of our banks. So the first one, we got bank one, uh, short-term, bank one, long-term here. And here's a graph for our short and long-term uh, for our bank one. On the bank, on the short-term, because you can see we're pretty much averaging pretty close to zero, which is about perfect. And on the long-term, you can see it's a negative 3.5, negative four, which means that it's taking a little bit of fuel away, but you know it's not excessive. The rule of thumb is that when you add these, you don't want to see uh, anything greater than negative or positive 10 when you add them up for each bank. And here's the numbers for our short and long-term fuel trims for our, uh, bank number two. As you can see, uh, again, these numbers are really good as well. They're pretty much nearly perfect. All right, so going down this list, we know that we don't have a fuel issue. That's not our problem. We don't have a lean air fuel mixture. Um, Timing is not an issue, no indication of a bad knock sensor. Uh, we don't have a bad EGR valve because on this car, funny enough, we do not have an EGR system. So what we were basically left with is either excessive carbon buildup or wrong spark plugs. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a bore scope to show you the inside of this engine to see whether we have excessive uh, carbon buildup or not, but we're actually gonna replace the spark plugs on this car because I'm pretty sure they're not the wrong spark plugs, but according to the owner, the spark plugs on this car, which has about 160 plus thousand miles, have never been replaced as far as he knows. So there's a high probability that those badly worn spark plugs in there are getting too hot and uh, increasing the combustion temperatures in the, our engine and therefore causing our detonation issue. All right, so I won't bore you with the replacement procedure. I'll just give you a shot of what the old spark plugs look like and then compare them to the new ones. There's what the first spark plug that I pulled out of this engine looks like and I think you guys can see the problem. You guys see our spark plug gap? It's not supposed to be about a quarter of an inch. It is Motorcraft, so it's the right spark plug for this car. But as you can see, it's simply badly worn out, whereas the gap between our electrode and our grounding tip is double this new one, which is properly gapped, and that's probably what's causing our detonation issue. All right, so now it's about an hour later and we replaced all of our spark plugs and all of our spark plug wires as well. So now all that's left to do is to go on our test drive, see whether we solved our issue or not. Now unfortunately, I don't have any before shots where this engine was making that knocking noise, but it was doing it basically under load and then that's when uh, you get most of the knocking when you're having uh, engine knock issues. And as you can see, we're going uphill now and RPM around 3,000 and no knocking whatsoever. Still going uphill, kind of flooring it, no issues. So that's it folks, hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, do me a favor and check out these other related videos, of which I put links to on this side of the screen. There will also be links down below in the description box as well. Alright, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.